What's up everybody, Mr. J here. Today we're talking about the citric acid cycle, otherwise known as the Krebs cycle, otherwise known as the cycle nobody ever wants to learn about in biology class. But today we're going to make it simple so that you can understand the concepts behind the citric acid cycle so it makes everything else in the process much more easy to understand. So let's start with the goal. Why are we doing this? Well, the goal of the citric acid cycle is to produce these high energy molecules called NADH and FADH2 indefinitely. We want this to continue on and on because if you've watched my electron transport chain video of how we make ATP, these two guys are the major players in that process, okay? So if you haven't watched that, go back. I'll tag it right here. You can go watch that before this one. So we need to make these molecules. And where are we making them? In the matrix of the mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell, right? We are making them in the matrix. And what's nice about this is these two intermediates are going to go directly into the electron transport chain, which I've talked about, which is going to be in this inner membrane right next to it, right? Location matters a lot. So that's why these are being made in the matrix. So let's talk about how we actually produce these. But before that, anytime we're producing something in biology, we need ingredients, right? And where do we get these ingredients? Three different places. So let's talk through them really quickly. Number one, we have two leftovers from the electron transport chain. You probably know which two. It will be NAD and FAD. What's different about these and that? Those have hydrogens. Remember in the electron transport chain, those are very important. So what we need to do is add hydrogens to these guys. That's the main goal of this whole process, y'all. Keep that in mind. But we also have a couple other ingredients that we will have. We will have a molecule called pyruvate, specifically two of them, but I'm going to just do one pyruvate for this example. And this is a product of what's called glycolysis, which will be the next video you watch after this one, where we're literally breaking glucose apart and we are generating these molecules called pyruvate. Okay, very important. Lastly, we will also have two molecules specifically from the previous citric acid cycle, which we'll go through, and that's going to be coenzyme A, and it's also going to be oxaloacetate. Big words, don't get scared, it'll make sense here in a second. So CoA stands for coenzyme A up here, and oxaloacetate will be this intermediate. So, hey, let's get started. Let's put the ingredients together. To start, we are going to take pyruvate, CoA, and then NAD to begin. So check this out. We're going to have pyruvate begin, and pyruvate is a three carbon molecule. What does that look like? Well, I'll have three little C's here. So we've got three carbons here. We're going to add them to an NAD molecule, and we're also going to have CoA here in the process. Now, these guys are all gonna do some chemical reactions together. There's some enzymes involved I'm not gonna go through, but all of these guys are going to combine together in such a way that it will produce a few different molecules. Number one, it will actually produce a carbon dioxide molecule that will be breathed out of the body. Now check this out. There's a carbon here, right? So I should have drawn that in blue. So if this is a carbon atom, where did it come from? Well, we probably knocked that carbon off of the pyruvate, right? And you're exactly right. So now we have a two carbon chain molecule that's actually going to be attached to our CoA, our coenzyme A. And that's the first important intermediate. Now, there's one other thing that will happen. NAD will actually produce NADH. Woohoo! We made our first NADH molecule. That's awesome because that's going to go to the electron transport chain and start making some ATP. So well done. But we need a lot more than that. And that's what's going to happen in the rest of the citric acid cycle. So now that we've got this molecule, I'll write it out. It's called acetyl-CoA. Acetyl refers to those two carbons, a couple hydrogens in there. CoA is that coenzyme A. It's actually going to combine with a four carbon molecule that I've already mentioned. That's going to be oxaloacetate. This is going to be left over from the previous citric acid cycle. So here is oxaloacetate. These two guys are going to come together, okay? And they are going to produce a very, very important intermediate. It's named after the cycle, citric acid. Wow, what a thought. So this is going to produce citric acid, otherwise known as citrate. And citrate is a six 
carbon chain molecule. Oh my goodness. And we know that if there's a lot of atoms in a molecule, there's a lot of stored energy. That's key here, you guys. So think about this. We've got a lot of stored energy in the citrate, and we're going to start harvesting the energy, and we're actually going to produce these molecules here to go to the electron transport chain to make ATP, which is our usable form of energy currency. So let's get started. Here's citrate. Citrate is going to go through a couple of different chemical reactions and turn into a four carbon intermediate, okay? This is our first big harvest of energy. During this process, I just knocked off two carbons, yes? That means I'm going to produce two carbon dioxides, all right? So we're up to three carbon dioxides produced. By this process, it'll get breathed out of the body. At the same time, we're also going to produce to NADH. So NAD is actually going to enter into this process here, NAD. It's going to enter into this process here and then come out the other side and produce two NADHs. Now you may be asking, where the heck are these hydrogens coming from? There are hidden hydrogens in these molecules here of citrate, oxaloacetate, all that. I'm just not drawing them out for simplicity's sake. Awesome. So now we've got this four carbon intermediate. And from here, you notice that the four carbons here, four carbons here, there's not really much of a change, but this one has higher amounts of stored energy. So check this out. There's going to be several intermediates that I'm not going to go through because I just think it's redundant. I think it's ridiculous that we have to memorize them all. A lot of chemical reactions will happen to get to oxaloacetate from this intermediate in this process. This is our big player of energy production. This is when we are going to make Two NADs are going to go into it and create two NADHs. Woohoo! So we've got more and more and more. So total NADH, we have five just from one citric acid cycle. Awesome. At the same time, we've left out this poor guy so far, right? In this case, two FAD are finally going to enter into this process as well and produce two FADH. Whoops, H in red, two. Wonderful. So guys, at this point, we have basically concluded the video. We've produced our intermediates for the electron transport chain that will then pump the hydrogen ions, use it to power ATP synthase and make ATP. Again, watch that video if you haven't already. At the same time, I'm not going to mention this too, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to really mention this all that much because it's kind of unimportant, but there is a guanosine diphosphate molecule that will actually get phosphorylated in this process and produce what's called a GTP. This is also important in energy production. I just don't usually point it out in class all that much. But if your teacher does, that's where GTP is made and just one of them is made. So guys, this is the citric acid cycle. Now, why is it called the cycle? Well, because our goal was to make it indefinitely, right? So here's the thing. All of these molecules we've just generated will go to the electron transport chain and make ATP, but in the process, they will take away the hydrogens and produce these guys again, right? At the same time, we're gonna continue producing CoA, right? Because CoA has never really left, although I didn't draw it, but CoA does leave right here, gets cleaved off. So it's just kind of chilling around waiting for the next cycle, okay? So CoA is gonna be there, we made oxaloacetate in the process, but what's the kicker here? What's the kicker? Pyruvate. We need to continue getting pyruvate. Well, pyruvate came from breaking down glucose. Where did glucose come from? You ate it. You ate food, broke it down into glucose, and then it got chopped up to pyruvate to go through this whole process to make energy. So if you want to keep producing energy, what should you do? You should continue to eat. Awesome. Hey guys, thanks for watching. This was the citric acid cycle, otherwise known as the Krebs cycle, also known as hopefully now the cycle you actually want to learn about. Okay. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. Please like this video so more people can watch this and understand the process. And if it helped you subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate it. Be sure to check out my glycolysis video that will be coming. It'll be tagged right here. And again, this is Organized Biology. Thanks for watching y'all.